So we'd like to welcome all the devotees. Thank you so much for joining. I uh, wanted to seek the blessings of Radha Mata, Radha Shamsad, Krishna Bharam, Bhan Gopal, Gonita, Shila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj and the Assembly Oti. So that continue with the journey of the soul. Uh, we discussed um, this yesterday. Let me just uh, check. Yeah. In terms of what happens to the soul when he leaves this body. The whole system is very organized, very detailed, very fair. It's been running for a long time. There are no bugs in the program. Every living entity you see has landed up in the body they have by this process. Including ourselves, of course, as we work our way through this life, our next life is being put together. For as we go, Lord, as, uh, for us as we go. So that at the time of death, we are transferred through the agencies of material nature to all that awaits us. Okay, so actually we've been through this. Let's go through the next one. Death is the final exam. So as to make this and sweet and less painful, one must prepare for the final exam throughout one's life. What happens in what sequence when the soul is leaving the human body? There's no exact way for all. How and when a person will leave his body and where he will go depends mainly on his guna and karma. So guna is the qualities, the material qualities, uh, mode of goodness, passion, ignorance. And karma is our activities. Joined with intervention of others, by others, through blessings, prayers, rites, etc., rituals, etc. Generally, there are three types, categories of people. Those who are devotees of God, they go back to Vaikuntha because they remember God at the end. Those who do good karma and they go to heaven. Those who do pious deeds but are inclined to do deeds that are not good for them, they go to hell. So there's a mixture of good and bad. So they may have to, they'll have to suffer some time for the not so good activities, but they'll enjoy the karma from the pious acts. In Garud Puran, there are many chapters on different types of impious acts and the inappropriate and appropriate actions. One sees all of one's life flash before him and he dies remembering what is most dear to him. So this is quite common. We've heard this many times that somebody's about to die and they, they will, the, the whole of their life flashes before them within a moment. And of course, what is most dear to them, they'll remember at the end of life. If the person is very attached to his body, he will remain in a coma for some time, trying to postpone his exit. So this might happen when he's very attached to one's body, can't let go, but it's time to let go. So that person may may enter the coma for some time. Several days, several hours before death, the person enters the terminal phase. So what is this terminal phase? Often it has a form of terminal restlessness. So this is a medicinal term, restlessness. He may see his dead ancestors and friends as well as specific ativa kika, escorting devatas, may communicate with them, which the hospital staff and relatives present there usually consider delusion. For sometimes some devatas may come to them, and he may communicate with them. Sometimes, and we've, heard stories about this the Yamudutas come and uh, the 
person who's about to die is in a really fearful condition. Perhaps he's saying to the staff or the relatives that there are dogs in the room. So sometimes these Yamadutas, they come with wild dogs to catch the soul, especially the sinful ones. The body then gradually turns cold, uh, uh, starting from extremities. This is due to the detachment of the prana and the subtle senses, parts of the subtle body from the gross body. So this is Chandogya Upanishad and Vedanta Sutra. So body starts to get cold because the life is separated from the subtle, the gross body. What are the mental symptoms? There is a strong loss of interest in life, a dull outlook on life in the world, the disappearance of the taste, so some people stop eating, drinking. All the close people seem very distant, a feeling of the inevitability of something, a desire to repent all of one's sins, the feeling of eternity, that I will not die, which is where we are. What are the physical symptoms? The bones become prominent as the flesh as well as the eyes start to sink in. The nose becomes thinner and sharper. The look becomes absent, so you look just looking into nothingness. <laughs> Facial features, uh, gestures disappear. The body becomes unfamiliar and wooden. So the person who's about to pass away will feel these things. The person refuses food and then also drinks. If the pets, especially cats and dogs, if there are pets, they will start to behave unusually. So they can perhaps sense something's happening. If one dies without rectifying all one's impious acts before dying, then one suffers more after death before going to Yamraj, the Lord of Death. Therefore, the husband and wife are recommended to take vanaprastha, semi-retired life, and go to religious places, feed Brahmins, Gomata, the poor, etc., to reduce their impious karma before dying. This is almost like to negate the sinful activities one has done. The reactions to that is negated by these practices. Nowadays, people don't believe in this as they don't believe that the soul suffers after death. So they want to enjoy as much as possible. The idea is to look after the body only and let the body enjoy. The exit of the soul itself happens through one of the nine bodily openings, the gates. So the gates are basically, we have the ears, the nose, mouth, um, the two points in the genitals. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the other two? Um, eyes. So that's the nine gates. As per one's karma and destination, those who are pious, impious, leave the body from the bottom gates, so the genitals. Those who are pious, leave the body from the seven upper gates. One who departs from the anus and genital goes to the lower regions, wherein one who departs from the upper portion of the body goes to the higher regions. Those who depart from the top of their skull so there's, there's a tenth place where the soul can depart from. From the hole known as the Brahma Rendra, the place where the three bones in the skull meet, will attain the regions of Brahman. So there's a soft part, top of the head, where the Sikha usually is. And those who are really elevated souls can push the soul push themselves up to the to the head and at the time of departure burst through uh, the skull and go to 
the regions of Brahma or the spiritual world? Those are quite rare. There was an incident with Bhaktivinoda Thakur. I think his grandfather left in that manner, which was quite extraordinary. If a person is impious and sinful, the messengers of Yamraj called the Yamadutas. Their characteristics are as follows. They are fierce, horrible looking persons with twisted faces. Copper red flaming hair that stand on the end. Black in complexion, frightening to behold. They appear at the deathbed of the person in question, drag him forcibly from his body with ropes and chains. When the Yamudutas are pulling the soul at, the, at that time, the person is unable to speak and you can see a scared expression on his face. This scene so frightens the person that he literally dies of fright. <laughs> Stories of Yamadut. So, in the scriptures, there are a few stories. Ajameel Prabhu. Ajameel, uh, his pastimes are described in the sixth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was a Brahmin, Brahmin boy, who was sent by his father once to the jungle to fetch summit um, leaves and twigs to make the sacrificial fire. He was a for the first 18 years of his life, he was a very pious Brahman, very obedient boy. But there, in the forest, he met a beautiful Shudra woman. And forgetting everything, he made her his wife and children were born to them. He was also very cruel to his parents who died as a result. And he also began, began thievery to feed his family. So from a Brahman, he turned into quite a nasty character. When that Brahman, who was very, who was the very embodiment of all vices, so he was terrible, reached the age of 88, the time came for him to die. So he was on his deathbed. At that time, the Yamudutas, the agents of Yama, the god of death, had arrived. The frightened Ajameen shouted loudly because he saw these terrible looking personalities coming with ropes to catch him. So he he had a boy, a young, young son, five-year-old perhaps, even less, called Narayan. So he shouted out the name of his youngest son, not oldest, youngest, youngest son. Narayan! Hearing the repeated calls of his name, Narayan, the servants of Vishnu, Servants of Narayan appeared, appeared there. And there was an argument with the Yamadutas. Here they are. Here's the Yamadutas. They'd come to catch the boy, catch the old man, Jajamil. But then the servants of Vishnu came. And they looked exactly like Vishnu with four hands. And they stopped the Yamadutas from taking Ajamil. And there was a debate between the Vishnu Dutas and the Yamadutas. The, the Yamadutas said, how can you stop us from taking this man? He's a sinful person. We have to take him to our master to be punished. And the, Yamadut, the Vishnu Dutas said, no, you can't take him. His sins have all been destroyed because he was chanting the name of Narayan. Narayan? You mean his son? Chanting the name of his son? He wasn't chanting the name of God. He was chanting the name of his son, Narayan. Doesn't matter. The name of Narayan is so powerful. Anybody who chants, even not thinking of the Lord, immediately he's protect is under uh, the protection of the Lord. <laughs> so the devotees of uh, Yama, Yamraj, had to back down and they left empty-handed. And Ajameo, he was listening to this conversation that was taking place. And he was shocked. He realized the foolishness of his ways and he was given a second chance. 
he was given another opportunity to continue to live. After the Yamadutas and the Vishnu Dutas left, he went to Haridwar and he, for 12 years or so, he served the devotees in a very humble, meek way. And ultimately, those same Yam Vishnu Dutas came back and took him on an aeroplane to the spiritual world. So from that day, Ajamil became a devotee of Vishnu and did penance on the banks of the Ganga. After some years, he attained salvation. Ajamil was saved from hell because he chanted Narayan as the Yamadutas approached him. Afterwards, so then the Yamadutas went to Yamraj and they were surprised. They said to Yamraj, we thought you were the supreme. Is there somebody more uh, superior to you? <laughs> And uh, Yamaraj explained, yes, there is. His name is Vishnu. And he, he, Yamaraj forbade his servants from touching devotees who, even if by mistake or because of bewilderment or illusion, sometimes commit sinful activities because they are protected from sinful reactions, because they are always chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So this is quite interesting. Yam Raj then told the Yamadutas, Brahmamsas are exalted persons who have no taste material for material enjoyment, who drink the honey of the Lord's lotus feet. My dear servants, bring to me for punishment only persons who are averse to the taste of that honey, who do not associate with Brahmamsas and who are attached to family life and worldly enjoyment, which form the path to hell. My dear servants, Please bring to me only those sinful persons who do not use their tongues to chant the holy name and qualities of Krishna, whose hearts do not remember the lotus feet of Krishna even once, whose head do not bow down even once before Lord Krishna. Send me those who do not perform their duties towards Lord Vishnu, which are the only duties in human life. Please bring me all such fools and rascals. <laughs> So, this is a pretty uh, uh, interesting, interesting dialogues between uh, Vishnu Dutas, Yamadutas, and then later on Yamadutas and uh, Yamraj. Modern encounters with Yamadutas. This is by uh, a devotee called Vaityanath. One day, a very freakish artist came to an old steel wagon Sochi temple with such with Sri Upanishad in his hand and told the devotees his story. I was looking for you people for three days. I am unbelievably glad I have finally found you. One day I bought this book, that's the Sri Upanishad. He couldn't even name its he couldn't even pronounce its name, an author Shilapopa, but only stammered something. And he tried to read it, but it was very difficult to understand so many strange words. Therefore, I put it on the shelf and cared no more about it. I was drinking lots of alcohol. One day, while drinking, while, while lying drunk in my bed, I, I heard strange voices nearby. It was something absolutely uh, new. I was looking for the source and saw two persons indistinctly. indistinctly. They were speaking about me, about my life, how sinful it was. They were recounting all my sins in great detail, which I even didn't remember. And also a few good things. Finally, they came to the conclusion, he must go to hell. <laughs> I was creeping in protest. I didn't want to go to hell and didn't know what is going on at all. But anyway, at once, one of them put a stringent rope on my neck. I tried to get rid of it and run away, but to no avail. The rope was very tight. I was almost finished. But suddenly, a cover picture of this book, Sri Upanishad, with Lord Keshav and Sheshnag. If you remember, it's actually Lord Vishnu and Sheshnag at the back. Appeared before my eyes. It was actually not picture, but reality. The snake was moving and out of a sudden, out of sudden a flame, suddenly a flame emanated from his many mouths. Totally bewildered about it, I asked those persons, what does it all mean? They answered, this is just the hell where you are going to go. But all of a sudden, 
everything disappeared and I woke up in my bed completely shocked. Immediately, I stopped drinking and smoking and tried to find you devotees to find explanation about all of this. I beg on my knees, let me stay here somewhere. <laughs> so it's very interesting. This story refutes the scientific theory that one's uh, near-death experience is influenced by his or her cultural background. Easterners are supposed to have different experiences than Westerners. So this was a Western person who had this experience. Uh, do you have this? Thanks. There are more stories of Westerners who meet the Lord of Death, Yamraj. Kalis Osis and Elund uh, Haradson, in their book At the Hour of Death in 1977, relate that a girl on the brink of death told the person present that the Yamadutas had thrown their ropes around her. Later, rope remarks were found on her legs. <laughs> so, there are many, many examples of this, actually. Okay. So, very interesting. The pure devotee is always with the Lord. But a pious person who is not completely fixed in Krishna consciousness, in old age, afflicted with disease and unfavorable health conditions, knowing death to be near, should be fearless and alert and should make reparations for any sins committed knowingly or in ignorance. When it is near the time to die, one must perform his ablations by worshipping Vishnu in the form of Shaligar. Give a gift of a decorated cow, Vaitarani, to a Brahman to ensure a safe passage over the river of death. Or give a cash equivalent if a cow is not available. This is quite important to give Gomata because uh, this counteracts a lot of the uh, punishment that can be, oops, that might be um, placed upon us. Worship with fragrant substances, with flowers, uh, with red saffron, and with tulsi leaves. Worship with incense, lamps, offering of food, and many mitai and other things. Give gifts to Brahmins and Vaishnavas. Feed them with Mahaprasad. Most importantly, recite the Mahamantra. These are all very important to do throughout one's life, let alone at the end of one's life. Even more at the end of one's life. <clears throat> he should call to mind and listen to the names of Krishna and Vishnu. The name of Hari coming within the range of hearing takes away the sins of men. Relatives come near the diseased should not mourn. Of course, that's quite hard. But by crying, by mourning, you're actually holding that soul back from being released from his body. And he becomes more attached to the body, wanting to stay. And that can be really detrimental for the soul. The Lord's um, holy name should be remembered uh, and meditated upon repeatedly. Those who recite the holy names of Krishna <clears throat> near the deceased are also are called relatives. <laughs> yeah, they're the real relatives because they're chanting names of Krishna, helping that soul move on, move forward. Of him who gives the voice to the auspicious name Krishna, tens of millions of great sins are quickly reduced to ashes. We don't know the power of the holy name. This is incredible. Even the dying Ajameel reached the spiritual world by Kunta by pronouncing the name, Narayan, which had been given to his son. How much more then is the effect when it's pronounced with faith? Hari, meditated upon, even by one who has evil thoughts, takes away sins. Fire burns even though accidentally connected. The sinful man is not able to sin when the power of the name Hari is uprooting the sins. Mm -hmm. 
O twice born, Yam said to his servants, Bring the man who denies all, but O messengers, do not bring the man who meditates on the name Hari. O servants, do not go near the sinless people who take refuge in the lotus eyed Vasudev and Vishnu, who is the supporter of the earth and carries in his hand the coins and discs. Bring those sinners who always turn away from the nectar of the lotus feet of Vishnu, who are served by the race of Paramahamsas, who know the true essence of things and are without possessions. And those who desire are burned up in the household, which is path of death, path to hell rather. Bring them whose tongues do not pronounce the qualities and names of the Lord, whose minds do not meditate upon his lotus feet, whose heads never bow to Krishna, who do not worship Vishnu. Okay. So I think let's stop there. Uh, journey continues. We continue on Monday. Any questions, any comments? Prabhuji, yes. uh, it's my experience. Hmm. Do you think you're close or someone, your family person going die, die, going to die and you sitting next to him or her? Hmm. Is, it, is it possible to chanting all the time God's name every time? Some yeah. my experience is that sometimes you you forget if you want it still you can't do it. Is it mm. true? Is it true? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, it's 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 not easy, especially when you're you're close to that person, and you know they're gonna leave soon. So no, you... no, no, no. Even 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 mm. to be honest, to be honest, was that situation, but. But I don't know why we we don't try to believe he's going now. He's going now, you know? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. That's why, that's why I don't know. Right. It doesn't help. It's, it doesn't help the person. It doesn't help us. I know, but it's hard. It's hard. Not everybody yeah, can do it. It's hard. But you have to be also mindful that it's good for that person. If, if we are not taking God's name and we are perhaps, you know, like maybe crying or whatever, you know, it will not help that person. Yeah, we know that, yeah. But but still, you know, we try our best. We know that's our uh, culture and like not as a culture, but our religious mm. things, everything. But still, it's hard. It's hard. It is hard, no doubt about it. But mm. Nothing, you know, like if you really want something um, valuable, you have to work hard for it, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And this is the most, more nothing more valuable than the Lord and his holy name. Mm -hmm. But we have to get into that practice. And it's a, it's a mindset for me. The, the, the younger we are when we have this mindset, the easier it is later. Uh, yeah, yeah. Later on in life, it be, it does become hard, but and sometimes we worry about the social customs. We don't. I don't care if if somebody is going to leave their body, or even if we think they're not, but they're in critical condition. We must help them. You know, mm. best. Yeah, we, we. I know. Um, I I just had experienced my husband, so I know that, and I try my I try my best, but I mm. don't know why sometimes goes think. Thought goes other side, and of course, yeah, this is a material world, you know. We <laughs> what to do, mm. but we have to make a good effort, and the Lord will help us, you know. Thank you, Mother Wen. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Second thing, you were talking yeah. about your. I, I wasn't there actually. I went to open the door. So mm. you were talking about your knee operation. You're going to have in Ahmedabad? No, no. Uh, yeah. Probably in the UK. It'll probably be oh. in the UK. Because, you know, I, I didn't listen whole thing, but one of my friends had an operation in uh, Ahmedabad or uh, India. But, mm. you know, after that, she had uh, some 
okay. problem and in in UK nobody touch now. Anything exactly. happen no. So it is very sometimes he's suffering a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's better to do it here. But yeah, you never know because the waiting lists here are quite uh, long. So quite we should... long, quite long. Yeah. We shall see. No, thank you, thank you for that uh, information. Mm -hmm. All the way. Thank you. Thank you.